Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about reverse T3. So we're going to go back to the basics a little bit and talk about what reverse T3 is, why it's so important if you are a thyroid patient, how to test for it, what it means when you do test for it, and so on. And also we'll talk about why your doctor doesn't, act, why you probably have never heard about this and why your doctor won't order, order it. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in treating patients with thyroid conditions, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. But today we're talking about the thyroid. So let's talk about reverse T3 here. And I have a little image to help you understand what it is that we're talking about. And again, we're going back to the basics here. Um, I realize that a lot of new people um, are going to be seeing this information. So I've been doing this for five years or so. So this stuff is second nature to me. But if you are somebody who has just heard about uh, or is just experiencing thyroid problems for the first time, I want this to serve as an introduction to you so you understand what a lot of people are saying. Because if you jump in, let's, let's say you were just diagnosed with Hashimoto's or low thyroid, and you try and jump into all this complicated information, a lot of it's gonna go straight over your head. So let this serve as just sort of a primer, an introduction to perhaps one of the most important thyroid lab tests available to you. And that is, again, it's called reverse T3. So when we talk about it, um, I'm going to explain it to you in the context of thyroid physiology. And what I mean by that is how the thyroid actually works in your body. Now, when I describe this to you, and I'm going to show you what your doctor is testing for and where each test comes in along the way, it's going to make a lot of sense to you. So let's start first with, we have your brain up here. So this is supposed to be you know, somebody, so somebody smiling here. There, it, this is inside their brain. So what happens in the very beginning of this thyroid physiology cascade, your brain, which is your pituitary gland, s creates something called TSH. Now TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, and this is the thing that your doctor is checking. Okay, this is probably the reason that you were diagnosed with low thyroid or Hashimoto's because your doctor checked this, this test and found that it was high and that means that you have a low thyroid, okay? We'll talk about TSH. I have other videos on TSH if you want, but that's generally how everything goes. Now, what you need to know is that TSH is one lab test, but there's lots more that we can talk about and it works by, by stimulating the thyroid gland. So this is what this is. This is your thyroid gland and this is found in your neck, okay? So it's sitting right in your neck. Your brain is talking to it. It pumps out this hormone called TSH. It goes all the way down to your neck and it says, here's this thyroid gland, which kind of looks a little bit like that. And it pumps out the thyroid hormone T4. Now, again, by the way, this is a simplified version. Um, it's a little more complex than this, but this, this will serve um, our purpose here. So it pumps out this, this hormone called T4. Now, you might also be aware of T4 because the doctor, your doctor will often order something called a TSH with reflex to free T4. So what this means is that if you check the TSH and it's abnormal, your, your, uh, the labs will automatically check how much T4 is also in your blood. And it's important because T4 is a thyroid hormone and it helps you to, to understand what's happening between the relationship between TSH and T4. But this isn't even where reverse T3 gets into place or gets into play. Now we're, now we're finally in the section where it matters. So T4 by itself, what you need to understand is it is inactive. Yes, it is a thyroid hormone, but no, it doesn't do any of the heavy lifting of thyroid, what you want thyroid hormone to do. That does not come from T4. T4 is only useful insofar as it is a reservoir for turning into T3 or reverse T3. So if you activate it and your body does this, well, let's say activate. If you activate this through an enzyme, it turns into T3. This is the strongest, most powerful thyroid hormone in your body. You want this to happen. So you want your body to take T4 and turn it into T3. But what happens is your body has a choice. It can take T4 and turn it into T3, but can also take T4 and turn it into reverse T3. Now, what you have to understand is that where T3 is the most important lab test or most important thyroid hormone available in your body, reverse T3 is basically the polar opposite and the antithesis to T3. So what they basically what happens is reverse T3 and T3 compete for binding on the cell. Well, it's actually inside the cell, but this will, this will just for the purposes of this uh, illustration, it'll make sense. So they are competing for this. So if there's one molecule of reverse T3 and one molecule of T3, they are both going to try and get on the same place and they're going to compete, which means that sometimes the cell is going to be turned on whenever this one's on top of the receptor and sometimes it's going to be turned off whenever this one is. So you want there to be way more T3 in your body and a small amount of reverse T3 as possible because what that means is that there's more chances that T3 sits on this receptor and binds to it and activates everything inside the cell and then makes you... Um, 
produ- makes it changes genetic transcription and makes you feel better, gives you energy, makes your hair grow, helps you lose weight, boosts your metabolism. All of the good things that happen from thyroid occur because of T3 and its impact on the cell. You want this to happen. But what again, what can happen is your body, instead of turning T4 into T3, it can actually turn it into reverse T3. And there are many things which cause your body to, instead of create T3, to create reverse T3. Things like inflammation, there should be a second M in there. Um, we have uh, infection, we have dieting, we have uh, decrease in nutrients or so certain nutrient deficiencies, over-exercising, uh, and so on. So tons, and by the way, medications included in here. Um, I have a video on all of the causes of which, uh, all of a uh, video which explains all the things which take, which causes your body to take T4 and turn it into reverse T3 instead of T3. But what you need to understand is this process is occurring in your body whether you realize it or not. And what the beauty about reverse T3 is that we can check it to see how much reverse T3 is in your body. And it's a thyroid lab test. You can actually stick a needle in your blood. You can pull out that blood and you could spin it in a lab and see how much reverse T3 is there. And that will tell you, do you have a lot of reverse T3, which would be bad, or do you have a small amount of reverse T3, which would be good. And it will actually give you a number. Then what you can do as a thyroid patient is you can say, okay, if I know that my reverse T3 is, let's say high, I can look at what I'm doing over here, things that cause a high reverse T3. I can look at, do I have inflammation in my body? What type of medications am I taking? Are my medications impacting it? What type of thyroid hormone medication am I taking? Should I change it? Because most medications contain only T4, but you can actually take T3 and then bypass this whole thing altogether. So it gives you a lot of information and insight in terms of what you should be doing, um, how you should be treating your thyroid, what sort of things that you should be um, um, doing to help naturally treat your thyroid, what types of thyroid medication you should be taking, and so on. So reverse T3 is incredibly important in helping you understand how you should proceed with your thyroid um, hormone management. And remember, every single one of these things can be tested. TSH can be tested, T4 can be tested with free T4, that's that test. You can check, check T3 with a total T3 and a free T3. And you can also check reverse T3. So when, I, when you get your labs drawn, and if you're, again, if you're a new thyroid patient, you want to look at every single one of these tests. Total T3, free T3, reverse T3, free T4, and TSH. That really forms the backbone of this whole system. And, and, and most doctors, like I said, only order the TSH. They will only order that lab test, and then they'll say, hmm, your TSH is, let's say, 2.5. And they'll say, you know what? Yep, checks out. Everything is good. But they haven't even looked at all these other things. They haven't looked at T4, they haven't looked at T3, and they haven't looked at reverse T3. So what a lot of savvy thyroid patients are doing, and doctors who understand this physiology, they are ordering all these tests, and they're getting much more information than what a regular doctor, including an endocrinologist, would get, by the way. So what this does, it just gives you plenty of information to help address your treatment. That is why reverse T3 is so important. Um, now, understanding the, the nuances behind it, it's a different story. We're not going to go in that today or go into that today, but I just want to introduce you to this topic of reverse T3 if you are a thyroid patient and you're new to this. So if you have any questions about it, um, if you're wondering how to get it tested or anything like that, leave it in the comment section below um, and I'll do my best to, to answer those questions as they come. Uh, and by the way, if you haven't already, make sure you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information outlining and explaining this, hopefully in simple terms. That's my goal is to make all this information readily available and easy to digest and understand for thyroid patients so they can actually feel better. Because if you don't understand this, by the way, you can't count on your doctor to understand this. So it means that you have to understand a lot of it. And if you don't understand it, then you know there's a not a very good chance that you're going to be feeling better. Um, so that's why I have all this information, videos, podcasts, articles, etc. So again, make sure you download those free free resources. I think they'll they'll benefit you a lot. And that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.